We are about to get underway in the women's sprint enduro final. Here we go. Clean and straight start. It doesn't always happen like that off a beach start, but everyone seemed to do all right. A couple of extra dives there from Emma Jeffcoat. And to the right of screen, in the red is Kirsten Casper, and she yeah, has had a fantastic start. start. Kirsten Casper there. I was expecting Taylor to go out well on that far left-hand side, and also Katie Zafir is on the far right. But Kirsten really got away to an absolute flyer there. There was one or two didn't didn't seem to enter the water quite as smoothly. I think Jody would have been a bit disappointed with her her sort of uh, run in there. She seemed to stumble a little bit and get get a little bit behind very early on, which she wouldn't have wanted. Um, but yeah, Kirsten's straight out there to the front. Kirsten Casper won one of our heats, so don't forget she has the short shoot that she can use on the first or second run. It's a little wrinkle we've added to Super League Triathlon by virtue of a heat win, and Taylor Spivey had a heat win too in the other heat. They get a tiny little shortcut they can use at either time on the run. Of course, they do it through twice, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. And I'd be keeping it in the back pocket. I'd be keeping it for the last run, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I completely agree. If the conditions allow, then having that on the final lap, the fight right at the end, have that little five to ten second advantage at the death is just absolutely invaluable. But the tactics that will play out will be very much dependent on the way the race unfolds itself. If there is a gap that's gone a bit early on, if Katie's going to try and go solo, which we've seen her do in several of the other stages, you might want to be using that short shoot a little bit earlier on just to bridge yourself back on. And Kirsten's done that in a couple of races, actually managed to get back up to Katie when Katie's already gone away. So it's, it's a useful little tool to have up your sleeve. She might want to use it early on if, if the, uh, the race unfolds in that way. But being able to save it to the end would be absolutely brilliant for her and uh, would, would make a hell of a finish. Great shots there from our boat as Kirsten Casper takes control of this swim and you can tell it's a quick swim by virtue of the fact that they are just about all in a straight line and jumping on the feet of each other and they come up onto the beach We've near where that Jeff land Coat swim boy is. Yeah, Jeff Coat just uh, in second, I think, and then Taylor Spivey in third with Katie Safira is in fourth. So all fantastic swimmers. Kirsten actually has some incredible swims, a little bit more probably erratic than she'd like to be in the swim, but she is leading this one out. And as you said, Will, she's dominating this swim a little bit. She's really strung them out. A little bit of a stumble there from Emma coming out the water and a little gap back to Taylor and uh, Katie. That's definitely something we wouldn't have expected to see. But Kirsten's really really done a very, very good job on this. So Kirsten Casper into the water, and you can see the different line taken by Emma Jeffcoat and everyone coming in behind her because a little bit to the left, as we're looking at it now, is the faster route to the boy, but obviously a little bit further in terms of the run required on the beach. So two different lines taken, Kirsten Casper with uh, clear water all around her and everyone else on the feet of Emma Jeffcoat following her in and hoping that's the train to the front of this swim, at least to bridge that gap to Casper, who is taking control at the front of this race and I like to see that from her she's bold been racing. aggressive and yeah. bold early on Absolutely. and that's something that I always enjoy watching and we all do enjoy watching is pushing the pace at the front and not worrying for that tactical worry as Chris McCormack two-time Hawaii Ironman world champion tears himself away from the VIP area and joins us in commentary Macca welcome I was actually sitting with uh, Kirsten Casper's coach, Jonathan Hall, there. He held me up, and uh, I was asking with her winning the short shoot this morning in the heat what she was going to employ, whether she'd take that early in, in the first run or whether she would uh, set the race up. He said she was very primed for a big swim. She's doing that right now, and she's going to follow what Taylor Spivey does. She thinks together that they can both use that short shoot and potentially alienate um, Katie Zafaris for that second swim, but we'll, we'll be very interested to see how she takes that seeing them both taking different lines again here. It's really interesting how some people have tried to go for where, where it gets shallowest quickest yeah. so that they can start dolphin diving, get themselves out and running quicker, given that we know running is quicker than swimming. We saw that when they re-entered the water halfway through that swim. Some of them chose to run down the beach a bit further just because it meant they could actually run more than they swam and it meant they could dolphin dive for further. Well, that's what Jeff Coates doing there on the right yeah. of screen. She's, she's taken that straight line off the boy. It is a much longer run. We'll see if that pays off for her. Well, that's the biggest gap, I think, in terms of different techniques that we've seen there between Casper and Jeff Code. And Jeff Code, a very accomplished open water swimmer, she will have decided on that. And she ends up coming out just with Taylor Spivey, who is our swim split leader from Malta. And behind them, Katie Zafiris, who is our championship leader. Kirsten Casper is currently second in the championship. If she's going to have any chance of chasing down 
Katie Zafiris for that 100,000 US dollar prize in Singapore. She needs a big win here. There is no doubt about that. That's a big gap she's it got really there. We've, we've not seen anything like that, I don't think, in any round so far where someone's got that big a gap out the water. And actually, I think that showed that the route that Jeff Coat took at the end there wasn't quicker because she ended up coming in with Taylor, whereas she was in front of Taylor going back in at halfway around the swim. So I think that shows that the actual the route that Kirsten and the others took was, was a better one. We saw yesterday with the triple mix and early this morning in the heat, so being out in front like this has a big advantage. You're able to ride through this first lap, take him time up this first climb, and get through that Winston Church Hill. Is that what we call it, Will? Which is no, the it's split opinion <laughs> calling it because it's, there's a church at the top of the hill, and it's Church Hill, and then it became Winston Church Hill. What do you think? <laughs> He's incredibly witty. Well done. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's <laughs> definitely split opinion amongst the team here at Super League, but we're going to run with it for that. Um, feel free to get in touch with touch with us if you don't like it, but we, we're doing our best to mix it up here in Super League Triathlon, and Kirsten Casper is doing that as well. She powers up the hill on her own ahead of Emma Jeffcoat. You see Charlotte McShane on the left of the screen with Jody Stimson, desperate to get across, using the climb to close that gap, and she has. She had a bit of tardy transition, and... All the women are back together again. Yeah, they're just about making it on over the top here, and that's really important. This is such a brutal format. Two rounds through of swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. You don't want to be alienated by the time you've come out of the swim on the first round through. It's a really long day if you're chasing from there and you're trying to minimise gap deficits from there. Kirsten here, just, just ridden herself off the front, really. She's looking really quite confident and comfortable. I wouldn't be surprised if we see those other girls closing on her, but really dominant racing so far, and just really good to see someone racing with such confidence and, and just willing to have a go. And look who's drifted to the back of the pack again, Summer Cook, who was, what, fourth out of the water. She really struggles on that descent. I, I spoke to her after this morning's heats, and she struggles on this next climb, this top left-hander. She said she doesn't turn left. We talked about in the heats. She doesn't turn left well. She's more comfortable on the right-hand turns. Yeah, she's a, she's a Zoolander in she's that way. She's a Zoolander. <laughs> she agreed. She struggles. If you watch her here, she lets the gaps open, and uh, it's been a real problem for her. See that? Yeah, that was not the, not the best turn from some of that. I also spoke to her, and I think she, she was almost in two minds as to whether it was a good thing or a bad thing that she qualified for the final. Yeah. I think she's, she's tired. She was very upfront about the fact that she, it's been a long weekend. It's been a lot of racing. She's tired. She thought, you know, brilliant, I'm in the top ten. That means I'm in the final. But at the same time, gosh, that means I've got to go again You've in just a few hours. And she was doing everything she could, putting her feet up, lying down in the recovery area for several hours, just trying to get herself ready to go again. Yeah, there's no doubt the eliminated athletes are availing themselves of the, uh, the VIP area here, having enjoyed a very long season, and they're enjoying the racing very much as well, watching their compatriots, their rivals, take on the top ten shootout, the final of this women's sprint enduro, and at the moment, and as it was before, gap. it's nine seconds now from Casper to Spivey and Zafiris. The three of them started, well, they were the quickest in the heats, but Casper's put nine seconds into the field, and she's doing a... She's, she's having a very brave race at the beginning of this one. It's a very, very long one, though. We're in the second of six legs. I don't think uh, Katie Zafiris can really afford to let Kirsten go completely on her own just because she's got that short shoot. And actually, that gap there is probably halved up, the, up that climb. Yeah. And I'm not surprised to see that. Katie will know that, yes, there's a long race. There's a lot of racing to go still in this one. But she can't afford to let that go. And Summer Cook is off the back. She's lost that group completely and I think that was really the work driven by Katie Safaris to close that gap and put a lot of the women under pressure and it's so stringing those girls out. Really you know, that whole pack is completely splintered as they went up that hill there and then down as they come round up to go up to uh, Winston Churchill. Yes, welcome on board <laughs> the we Winston go. Churchill train. Here they go up Churchill and Gerson Casper has a look at one of the screens to the side of the course just to see where she's up to and that gap has closed up and Katie Zafiris, well, she'd agree with you. And there at the top of the hill, the church you can see in the back of shot right there. That's why we're calling it Church Hill and that's where it all came from. And there it is in a beautiful old church. It is here in Puerto Cristo on the southwest coast of Mallorca, a beautiful Spanish island and we've enjoyed our time here immensely staying at the Rafael Nadal Academy. The athletes have had a fantastic time using the facilities and meeting Rafael Nadal as well on Thursday. And Kirsten Casper leads from Zafiris who had a little wobble there, maybe just went a little tiny bit wide and found herself in the gutter but manages to pull it back and it's still an American 1-2-3. No, it's not, sorry. That's Carlin Machane. Machane. Carlin is in there like between yeah, Zafiris and Spivey. See Jody there in about fifth place just 
seems to be a little bit uncomfortable. You can see the, the exertion written all over her face, her and Joanna Brown, both of whom had to work quite hard this morning. Jodie had a slightly easier read through. Joanna really had to run hard to, to get that fourth place in her heat. So she's she's definitely told me she was tired after this morning's heat. And Rachel Clammer for the first time moving up a lot closer to the front. She was sitting a bit further back. She looked to be struggling earlier. I thought it was quite a surprise. I thought she'd really, you know, come into her own on this climb. She's moved up in the at the right time. I think it's one of those courses, I think Kirsten Casper has been able to get through this course quite comfortably out in front. It's one of those courses where leading isn't really a disadvantage. You get to... She's been controlling the race. Yeah, she really has. It allows you to, I guess, on the bike, use the entire width of the road. And we've got three dead turns and some 90-degree some turns, which there's a real benefit to holding as much momentum through those turns as you can as we turn into the bottom of Church Hill especially. Um, and she'll, you'll see that right here as they take the left-hand turn. She can take as wide a line as she wants to. She can hit that apex as much as she needs to, and there's no one next to her. Although, because they're all strung out now in a group of 10, everyone can take the same line. But that doesn't always happen like that. It just as soon as someone breaks in the group, especially if they're near the front of the group, it means the person behind has to break a little bit more, the person behind has to break a little bit more. And it just means that if you are in that eighth, ninth position, as we're seeing some of the girls like Emma Jeffcoat right there near the back of the group, Yuko Takahashi, they're having to surge harder every time to then catch back up to that, yeah. to concertina that group back together again. That takes its toll. They have to do that. 12 times, 12 hills, well, more than 12 corners. So there's all these corners that they've got to every time build themselves back into the group. And that, take, that takes its toll on your legs. You've then got to run, and then you've got to get back in and do the whole thing again. That's what Super League Triathlon is all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That's why I'm sat here talking yeah. about it, and I'm not out there <laughs> racing it. Two. Well, these dead turns, as you said, they kill that momentum. You can't roll off, especially the further back in that pack you go, and especially on that right-hander up to that big church hill. You, you kill that momentum. Yeah. Summer, Summer Cook, Cook is wow. gone. Summer that Cook gap's is gone. Gone, gone out hugely now on that lap, and that would be really disappointing for Summer. She's really fatigued. She's, she's in danger of falling into that 90-second elimination point. She's in extreme danger of that. She was 28 seconds gone through the second bike lap, and I think she's losing time hand over fist at the moment. We'll have to wait and see at the next set of splits, but... It's going to be a lonely old time for Summer Cook as she battles the 90-second elimination. She's sitting third in the series so far, which is a big, big kudos to, to the girls up front, to the women up front pushing the pace, because I know Rachel Clammer is, is eyeing off that position, as is Taylor Spivey, who missed Jersey, but has been so strong in Malta and here, and uh, that opens this right up. Except Joanna Brown as well looking at that position in third, so with Summer Cook being eliminated, yeah, we saw Katie Safiris there just going to the front of that climb, but she's relinquished her position at the front now and given that back over to Kirsten and Taylor. So these three American girls are really driving this pack between them, and they're really stringing it out. You can see the two at the back there having to struggle to get back on. It's just this constant yo-yoing that really, really will sap your legs in the long run, and there's so much racing still to go. We're not even halfway through yet. Up the hill they go for the last time in this bike leg. Of course, they'll hit another bike leg a little bit later on, and the legs will be burning even harder. But now Taylor Spivey has taken control of this one. Kirsten Casper sits in second, and it's still America 1, 2, 3, Rachel Clammer 4. And hasn't that just been the, the story so far of the last couple of weeks? The church in the background at the top of that hill, and we keep saying it, but the television just doesn't do justice to the steepness of that hill and also to the practical mountain that they have to take on in the back of your shot there, which they'll get to as they head through transition once again. But Taylor Spivey taking a leaf out of her partner, Vincent Louis' book, and taking control of the race. Louis is our championship leader in the men's. In the transition. And we'll see the men's a little bit later as they head into transition out on the first of two runs and we'll see whether Kirsten Casper decides to take the short shoot when it comes around at the end of the first lap. Oh, oh Katie Zafiris is down. Zafiris is down. That's going to hurt Katie Zafiris. And those girls will be able to hear on the in-house commentary. They'll have heard that. They won't have seen it because they were actually in front of her already. So the two main contenders, if you like, given that they've both got the short shoot and they've been racing so well. And they've gone and Kirsten for Kirsten and Taylor. And they've absolutely bolted out a transition because they heard Katie Zafiris go down behind them. A big, deep breath from Katie wow. Zafiris too. And we might be able to get a replay, but that definitely looked like it took the wind out of her. It was quite a decent trip. And the girls at the front, the women at the front, sorry, have... Uh, Put the hammer down. Clamour chasing 
And here is Zafira to the back. And she's just... It that's almost just seemed like her bike her drifted out yeah. and then she tripped over the, her own wheel by doing that. Yep, she's done that on her own. <sighs> so it happens to the very, very best of us. And I wonder if these two women on screen, both Taylor Spide and Kirsten Casper, both have the short shoot. You capitalise on that now, take it together. While I, think, she... I think that's the right thing to do yeah. now. I think the way the tactics of, or the, the race itself has unfolded, the best tactic would be to really put Katie under immense pressure at this moment, take that short shoot, make her work incredibly hard, which she's going to have to do anyway, given she had that incident in transition. Yeah. Make her work even harder to catch you. Both Taylor and Kirsten, fantastic swimmers as well, so they won't necessarily lose anything to Katie when they come to the second swim leg. I think just give yourself as big a buffer as possible. Absolutely Try and work great. together on that second bike leg and make Katie really work for it if she's going to take this title. This is a situation we have not seen before. We have not seen her make an error like that across the course of the racing. She has had one day where she hasn't won it, but that was due to some fantastic running from Cassandra Beaugrand. But we haven't seen her have to come a, back from an error like this. Yeah, it's will be a real test of her composure here. And I, I do think she's she is the complete athlete, and I do think she will be able to hold her composure and just sort of slowly but surely reel her way back in. But this is where it's up to those other two yes. girls. They need to put the pressure on her now, because otherwise Katie will, with her experience, with her endurance, with her just her supreme confidence in this racing They haven't taken it. And I think that's an error. Big they mistake. should have taken it at that point. I think that was the moment to put the pressure on Katie, because we can see she's closing them back in now. They would be talking between between each other now after that surely at that some point on that run and go should we take it at this point they didn't seem to be that no. would be the first thing you would do you'd Wouldn't look across you would you would say look katie's under pressure we've both got this together as you said vicky we both swim well together there's more power in numbers and we really put her under pressure even if she's to close the gap on the next bike ride you have to fatigue the legs and pay for that and it gives us every opportunity to potentially win this race all right zafiris is doing her utmost to try and cross that gap back takahashi and mcshane are trying to do the same. They currently sit in sixth and seventh position. So having a great race here, Joni Stimson. She's uh, she's been up and down over the weekend. I know she was a bit disappointed yesterday. She said she made a, an error in the first swim and it just cost her so big for the rest of the rest of the triple mix racing. But she's tucked in there in that group. And if she can go back into the water with them on the second round through, I think she'll be really pleased with that because that's a, it's a really ideal position to be in a slightly smaller splinter group right at the front of the racing. It's exactly where you want to put yourself. The one that has hurt a little bit is Joanna Brown. You can see has just turned the top of the course there. She was in that lead group earlier on, and she's dropped back behind McShane and Takahashi. The bronze medalist on. from yeah. Gold Coast, and Zafiris has got back on. So maybe they'll look back at that, Spivey and Casper, and think we made a tactical error. We should have put the pressure on and just tried to string them out at that point. But maybe they just both looked at each other and waited for the other one to make a move. Yeah, needed one of them to probably be decisive. If, if they had decided that whatever one of them did, the other one would do, I think they probably needed to be a little bit more decisive at that moment, a little bit more bold. But Katie now, she's obviously had to work harder than these girls to catch on. She's a fantastic runner, but that will have hurt her. So right now, she's on damage control. She's got to recover. She's got to give herself the next half a lap till she has to go back into the water to just tuck in in that group and try and find some rhythm, just be comfortable, catch her breath again. She seemed to take a sigh of relief as she rounded the bottom. Of, yeah, that, of that climb as if it was I'm almost on. visible wasn't yeah, it yeah it was really visible she's like i'm on let's relax let's stay with this group and, and let's prep for this next swim rachel yeah. climber got the goggles on yeah, there already Jody Stimson Jody Stimson doing Stimson the same. Same. yeah she's got the goggles on now as well she looks like robocop <laughs> running there at the back of the screen <laughs> she's decided it's better on the forehead no no, no she's, she's gone on. for the goggles <laughs> she's gone for the goggles jody Stimson. no room for fashion in super league triathlon <laughs> And look at that, Safari straight on the front of the, run, of the run already. Putting herself in good position in this swim. Kirsten Casper beating her out of the water in the opening swim. And I think Kirsten did such a good job up until this point. I mean, she's put herself right at the front of the race. She's been strong. She's looked pretty comfortable. I just wonder if she should have taken that short shoot a little bit earlier. Well, she does still have it in the pocket. So that is something to think about. Normally it's... Zafiris who has the short shoots in the pocket, which she doesn't this time, but they all get out together in a reasonably clean transition. She's off. If both those girls, Kirsten and Taylor, are actually feeling pretty comfortable, having that 
that short shoot for the second round is, is a great thing. I just wonder if alienating Katie, which, if I'm honest, is probably the only way you're going to yeah. beat her at the moment, maybe that was the time to use it. Um, if Katie's in this race, I'd be very surprised, I mean, as she is in this race, but in this race, I mean, right at the front of it, I'd be very surprised not to see her really push on on the run um, at the beginning of the, of the final leg. Taylor's Taylor 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 taking control yeah. there, hasn't she? Big control. And, the, and the, the issue you have with someone as strong as Katie Zafari is, is she can really push this next bike ride and make up for the losses that the short shoot have given her. She's, you've seen her do that in multiple races we've had where she's been able to gap them on the bike and, and set the entire race up. So the short shoot could be nullified if she makes a move now. Yeah, she really pushes on. on a, I mean, she's a fantastic swimmer as well. She's such an all-round athlete, but she really pushes on on the bike, which we've seen her do so many times. That short shoot becomes, you know, null and void. Nothing happens from it. Kirsten Casper's having a day. She's gone straight to the front. Tyler Spivey moved around on the beach. It was first into the water, but Kirsten's gone bang again as she did in the opening swim. Straight to the front and dictating yes. terms. Really impressive swimming today from Kirsten. She has. She's been at the front the whole way on both swims and looking to control it, really. Yeah, it's a real marked change in tactics from, from Kirsten Casper. And I have to say, she's gone out there and probably what is probably her last race of the season, if not second last, as we move into the middle of November very soon. And it's been a long season for all of these women. But... She's obviously decided today that she's going to go out there and she's going to control things and she's going to lead from the front. She's going to see what that gives her. And at the moment, Katie Zafir, as our championship leader, is sitting in a nice position. She's found herself after all of that right on the toes. And That'll be exactly where Katie wants to be. It's, mm. it's a marked advantage to be on somebody's feet, to be second or third in the, in the water rather than be leading it. Yeah, she that. had to work a lot harder than she would have wanted to at the end of that first round of the Enduro. She wouldn't have wanted to have that, that little slip up there and have to really work her way back on. Now she's back on, she'll be recovering. The whole time she's behind Kirsten, she'll be recovering. The other thing, I, I spoke to Katie Zafiris in between the heats and the final while she was getting a massage and she said, look, I know that I don't need necessarily to beat Kirsten in this race to win the $20,000 prize for the overall round points because yesterday Katie Zafiris uh, picked up 25 points out of a possible 50. There's 25 on offer today. Kirsten Casper picked up 18 for third position. So she has a little buffer there. If they finish one and two, Katie will still win the round. And he'll pick up the 25 championship points for winning the round and pick up the, the money as well. So she's 100% right, but the, the issue is with today's racing, if it comes back on a count back, it's today's race that matters. So if we reverse the order from yesterday and Kirsten Caspers to win this with Taylor Spivey finishing second, yes. Kirsten will win the, win the round. So it's uh, she knows that both Kirsten and Taylor both have the short shoot. So the, the ball is in Katie Zafiris' court to catch up, to do something to close that. The question is, what does Katie Zafiris do? One, two, and three. Yesterday they were with Zafiris 25 points, Spivey 21, and Casper 18. They are one, two, and three in this one with the equal amount of points on offer. So we could have a situation. I'm not a mathematical genius, but where a couple of people finish on 42 and one finishes on 43, depending on how it all works out. We'll have to uh, get our algebra team into it towards the end of this race because there is plenty of other contenders and plenty of other women who are very, very quick. But at the moment, the Americans are dictating terms and Casper's in the water first once again you just saw there when they came out to re-enter for the second second lap if you like on the swim that uh, Rachel Klammer had been a little bit distanced she was just about dangling there and then a little bit further back again was Jodie Stimson so those two haven't been able to live with the pace on the first part of that swim and will be desperately trying to hold on they don't want to get distance now they've made it this far through that that's the group to make and you can see Rachel's just slightly wide and I think she'll be really trying to get back onto Taylor's feet because Taylor is actually the one in third at the moment otherwise it's going to be these three Americans going it's going to be a duke out between the two who've got the short shoot in Taylor Spivey and Kirsten Casper and our race leader in Katie Zafira. And I think given the short shoot to Taylor Spivey and to Kirsten Kaspar, we'll just about roughly negate how much better Zafiris is than everybody in yeah. the field. It could be very, very close. It could close. be very close, <laughs> and we're hoping that it is. We're also hoping to see a little bit more of Rachel Klammer, Yuko Takahashi, Jody Stimson, as the field continues to string out. The last time, as they finished in the swim, I think... Uh, 
Summer Cook was just on the edge of the 90-second mark, so we'll wait to see what's happening with Summer Cook, who's third place in the championship with Rachel Clammer two points behind her and Jodie Stimson eight points behind her. So she could see herself, depending on where Jodie Stimson finishes, as far as going from third to fifth. Yeah, you can slide down in. the rankings on a day like today if, Absolutely. You, if you don't quite uh, have the day you want. And that's that's where Super Leagues are unique and quite uh, special in that you've got you've got to always be on your game. Our four jerseys lead the race. And, and it's interesting, we both we both agreed that potentially the Taylor and, and, and Kirsten have made an error by not taking that short shoot. But this is where the fatigue has to set in. So taking a short shoot when you are tired, you're not moving as quickly, it suddenly takes a five-second advantage when everyone's moving quickly and makes it a seven- or eight-second advantage. So and it may also, work out well for them. Yeah, it's mentally such a harder game as well for someone like Katie. Yeah. If they take that short shoot and then she has to catch back up to them and she doesn't have very long to do it, it just puts her under pressure. It gives her a little bit of panic. And we've seen her race with such composure over the whole weekend that they're probably just trying to hustle her a little bit. All right, Jody Stimson and you go Takahashi. You're trying to tack onto the back of that group of four and make it a group of six. And Kirsten Kaspers is dirt, certainly does not want that to happen as she tries to get. There's no flat space there to get the feet in the shoes. So you've got to kind of get the power and get the feet in the shoes and stay composed because you hit the hill essentially straight away on the bike, which is another thing to think about. Yeah, but again, really Kirsten Kasper responds and gets. Gets a couple of seconds at the start of the bike. She's been very, very strong off that transition up that first climb. And the one who's under pressure now is Taylor Spivey because if Kirsten, as we talked about earlier, if Kirsten Casper wins this with Katie Zafari finishing second, even with Taylor taking that short shoot, she doesn't win the round. So it's a question of whether you, whether you do the math in your head and think, to win this round, I need this group to come back together. And there's no use just going off the front and winning the race. I guess at some point you have to realise that you can't control yeah. what someone else does. So she can't physically make Taylor be better. She can't make Taylor feel good and catch back on again. And at some point she has to go, well, you know what? It's all about the glory on the day. Yeah. I'm going to do what I can do and try and win today. Down the hill they come for the first time. Four laps on the bike, two laps on the run, and we will crown a day and round winner. Still an American one, two, three. Kirsten Casper has shown us that she can be bold and take control of Super League racing today. Behind her, Zafiris, who I, I peeked over the top of our screens here and had a look at her as she came into transition and she was blowing very hard. She's had to work very hard to stay in touch as they go up to the top. And that aerial the shot Church there Hill. shows that Taylor actually is very close yes. to getting onto the back of Katie Zafiris. Not quite, would want to be just a tiny bit closer as they round to that corner at the top. But she's close enough now and she'll really, really want to just, just close that gap up just a few more metres and give herself some time to breathe. Well, there was questions around Kirsten Casper and Katie Zafiris in Jersey where she sat off the back of Katie's wheel and I remember we talked about the free ride, but I think that's been paid back in full today. Uh, Kirsten's been on the front of this bike ride all day. She's been on yep. front of the swim, and, and Katie's really been playing defense. She's not getting a bit of motorbike drag that yeah. Katie might have got a little bit in Jersey on that very, very tight course. Yeah, there's no, there's no motorbikes giving them a no. massive advantage today like there was definitely in Jersey. And, and uh, Kirsten, yeah, absolutely showing that for anybody who ever questioned her, she can ride a bike. She's, she's yeah. the complete package as well. Spivey right back on the back of this pack, along with Stimson and Clamour, and all of our split leaders are there, along with Jody Stimson. And in fact, that is your top five outside of Summer Cook. All quality athletes and all fighting it out for the honours in the first ever sprint enduro in Super League Triathlon Racing. Jody found that hill clock very tough. Yep. She found you can tell the enough. athletes who are just getting a bit tired now up the hill, they start to get a bit distanced, really try and race themselves back on down the hill, try and recover. But that's where it's so hard because on the downhill, you do want to be covering, recovering. You want to be freewheeling. You want to just give yourself a second before you have to go up the next hill. But if you're off the back, you have no choice but to push down the hill as well. So it's almost like a double whammy effect of not being on at the top and then you have to work so hard to get down the hill that the likelihood of staying on at the next one goes down. It all sounds really, really painful, <laughs> I have to say. 
I think that's, I think that's how you designed it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> looking, yep. at, looking at the faces, Kirsten looks very composed, as does Taylor. And, and Rachel Clammer looks better than this race or this round, this round of the bike than she did in the first. She's, she, feels, she looks a lot more comfortable when she's closer at the front. She's not losing that wheel on this climb where I saw her struggling in the last bike course, bike lap. So it'll be interesting to see how this run unfolds with two of them taking the short shoot. And potentially others looking at, at Katie's first and saying, look, I can get a scalp here. If I can take you out, I'm going to. Kirsten's really stretching them out again yeah. there. She's been really aggressive on this ride, actually. It's been really good to see her just, just assert herself a little bit. And I think she's been technically good. She's used the hill well. She's been very aware, I think, of what's going on in the group behind her and just putting, putting, the, putting the pressure on the other she girls. She really is. Yeah, she really is. And she's, she benefits as well from being at the top when they go up the old Winston Church Hill because she's, they tend to hold each other up a bit. They're going so slow when they get to the top and they get a little wobbly. And Rachel Clammer paid for that. And Jody Simpson too, just backing into each other a little bit. And that concertina effect of break sees them spread out a little bit. And as he seems to happen over and over, and they bunch up again on this hill. The yeah, she doesn't want to be back. And this is going to be a classic run leg to finish off this women's sprint enduro between five of the best female triathletes in the entire world. Kirsten Kasper, Rachel Klammer, Taylor Spivey, Katie Zafiris, and Jody Stimson and at the other end of racing Summer Cook is having a tough day of it and you can see it on her face she's coming up the hill on her third bike lap and she could be very very close it's interesting that she hasn't actually uh, done her shoes up yet. I would have yeah. thought when she was Are they maybe, just long you know, straps, though? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think when she was fighting to be in the group and stay on the group, that would have been a, a, a smart move. Don't bother doing them up until you feel secure and safe in that group. But now that she's off the back and on her own, I would have thought, now's a good time. Tighten up your shoes. Give yourself a little bit more power transfer through your feet, through your shoes, onto the bike. But no, she's um, she's still riding with them undone. Look at the different well, cadence. I'll be about to undo them anyway in a second. Look at the different cadence on Kirsten. And Casper much higher in cadence than, than Katie Zafiris and Taylor's just so small she's able to use the power to wait to get up that climb but I think that's the big advantage on this right hand here we turn. go we've got elimination Summer Cook Summer Cook have having had a tough day yesterday and worked very very hard to make it into the final today and she had a great race this morning in the heat she has been eliminated and she has tired legs and it's showing yeah, that's not the way she would have wanted to end her weekend, but she was very honest about the fact that she, she didn't enjoy this morning. She had to work very hard to run herself into one of those four qualification spots, and yeah, she's tired. Well, this will be a big last hill for this whole group. If anyone's struggling the most, it seems to be Jodie Stimpson. She needs to stay tough on this climb, and I wonder if anyone's going to go off the front and truly really push the pace. Katie's a little, little bit further back than I thought she'd like to be. Yeah, Taylor and Kirsten here, I think, making a really big effort. Yeah. They, uh, I think they seized the moment seeing that Katie wasn't near the front of the group round that last U-turn, and they really pushed through transition that lap. Rachel Klammer's jumped across to join them, and here we're seeing Katie having to work hard behind to get herself back onto the group again. Yeah, they're definitely making Katie, Katie work for it yeah. today. They're not going to hand it to her, and that's that's really good to see. We didn't want this to be a walkover. We didn't want to be, it to be a whitewash, and uh, we're definitely getting uh, the race we wanted to see. Last lap on the bike. Jody Stimson has waved goodbye to Yuko Takahashi, who is now nearly 30 seconds back. She's lost all that time on the bike. She was with Stimson, but Stimson crossed the gap, and Takahashi, you can see, labouring up the hill on her own, wasn't able to go with her. So it's a race in five for the honours here in the sprint enduro. And there is still another, it's another little gap. It just keeps opening up now, this gap between Rachel Palmer in third place in that group and Katie Zafira is in fourth. And every time that gap happens, Katie has to close it again. It just saps a little bit more out of her legs. And as Chris mentioned, Katie has a much slower cadence when she climbs the hills, which would just be her style. It'll be the way that she does it. She's a very strong athlete. She's a you know, very muscly athlete. But I do think that that over this amount of hills, over a whole weekend, it hurts. I'm sure it does. All of our split leaders and Jody Stimson. This is going to be a run. It is going to be a fantastic run. Just a reminder that both Kirsten Casper and Taylor Spivey, your athlete from the US in the red and your athlete in the blue, the two at the front of the group right now, both have a shortcut up their sleeves. We call it the short shoot, and they'll take it on the first lap of this last run. Or the second. That's there is choice. the turnaround. That yeah. 
You can see it in the middle of your screen right now. The big inflatable black Super League marker. It's a six second advantage according to, to the runners. So it's a big advantage over a 1.7 kilometer run. Yeah, that's a massive advantage over is it, proportionally it's huge yes. you know, to have that have that advantage and how they use that now that's going to be really interesting katie interestingly there fifth in she would not have she's not been at the back of that Taylor group pretty Spidey. much the whole day kirsten castle made a mistake they didn't quite rack a bike properly and that cost her just a second or two and taylor spivey has taken control at the front of this one and we know how good a runner she is the question is now, who can respond? Jody Stimson moving up on Kirsten Casper's arm. And at the back of that pack is your championship leader. Now, don't forget that Taylor Spivey, she only has 13 championship points by virtue of the fact that she was not in Jersey. So she could take the win here. She could take the round win as well. She took second yesterday, first today. And you'd have to say, if she does that, no matter where Katie Zafiris finishes, Taylor Spivey will be your round winner and take 25 championship points. And she's gone hard there as well. She's not holding back at all. She's absolutely gunned it out of transition. She knows that if she wants to win this, she has. She, there's no time for her to waste. She has to go now. Whether she's got that short shoot or not, she needs to push on, and she's done that. And Katie's gone straight to the front, realises the danger. Kirsten Casper's glanced across at the coach, Jonathan Hall. That's him in the corner with the black hat yelling, what do I do here? I think she needs to follow Katie out. They need to close this gap to Taylor Spivey. If she's looking at winning this race, she has a short shoot, but she needs to close the gap. And Katie Zafir is if she finishes second and Taylor Spivey finishes first as we eliminate another athlete, and it is Emma Jeffcoat. If Taylor Spivey wins and Zafir finishes second, they finish on the equal amount of round points. But because Taylor Spivey will have won Sunday, she will have won this round and she will take the maximum championship points and the big money prize. Katie Zafiris knows this and she has dropped Kirsten Casper and it is a race in two at this point between Taylor Spivey and Katie Zafiris but Spivey is about to take, take the short, the short shoot, shoot as is Kirsten Casper. She's going to take it right now. She's going to turn around and Katie Zafiris will have to she hasn't she taken hasn't it. Taken she the she's made an error. Casper knows that she, no, can. she can take it a first or second lap. Oh, she can take it. Alright, they can take it on the second lap. Kirsten's made a really I think that was the best move for Kirsten. Yes, she was yep. already off the back. She needed that shoot to get herself back into contention. Taylor still got that up her sleeve. But you can see the gap that that has caused. That's a big, big advantage, that short shoot. But Taylor now has that up her sleeve. So, so on the road, she could be in front of this race. It's going to be interesting to see when we see the shoot. Katie Safari straight to the front has to run this gap down. Katie's really under the pressure here. She knows that she's got to hunt down Kirsten. Kirsten's now but like in real time. That is how far yeah. she's in front of her. But Taylor's got more time to yes. gain on her. So like, it's a really hard position for Katie to be in right now, not really knowing how the short shoot's going to play out when Taylor takes it. Can she catch up to Kirsten, who's already taken it? It's a really nice position for Kirsten to be in, actually, sort of running off the front. She'll be That'll give her some confidence and some, some, some motion in her legs, maybe, that she didn't have just, just two minutes ago. She's all in now. She big. has to be all in. Yeah, there's no other option there's now. Big, big crowd enjoying this, the end of an amazing women's sprint in Juro. And Kirsten Casper, who has led much of this race, knows that Taylor Spivey has the short shoot up her sleeve. She'll know how much ground she just made up, and she'll know she has to have at least that as she comes around the top of the course and comes in to transition for the last time. And she is pushing it, pushing it, pushing it up this hill. Katie Zafiris in second. First time I think I've seen Katie look uncomfortable. Yeah. Her face is not portraying that, you know, calm, cool, collected persona, demeanor that she's had the whole racing, pretty much the whole of Super League series. But this is the first time I've seen Katie look a little bit labored and not quite as comfortable. Kirsten has to use this downhill, which she really is. She's open right up. She's got to keep that distance between her and Taylor Spivey. Because if Taylor takes that short shoot, which she doesn't have to, she'd be crazy not to, but crazy, she has yeah. to take it on this loop. I think they could come out almost together and we're going to see a match race for the win, I think. It's going to be a great finish coming in. So Kirsten's rounded that bottom corner now. She has to come all the way to the far end, but you can see that large inflatable there. That's where Taylor's going to turn around. So when they actually all link back up together, who's going to end up where? Oh, it's like a Formula One pit stop and we don't know who's going to come out in front of who. <laughs> Kirsten Casper's running. Taylor Taylor's going to take he's the shot. Oh. She's going to come oh, out in front. It. And Taylor Spivey takes the lead, and she's going to run away with it, you would think. If Spivey takes the 25 points, she'll end up on 46 for the weekend. And then it's a matter of what happens behind her. Zafiris is gone. 
Casper's going to come second, you think. Taylor is sprinting through transition here. She's still got to go up the hill, you turn back down again. But she's absolutely all in. She's really sprinting here. She doesn't want to give Kirsten a chance. It's not over. You've still got 250 metres of running here. A slight little uphill with a downhill to the finish. A lot of you guys ran it this morning in the corporate relay, and a lot of people struggled right here. But Taylor's Bobby. You can see it on her face, yeah. but she's, she's not going to struggle. Going. She's going to win this now, I think. I think this is going to be hers. I think you're right. I think Taylor Spivey is going to run it home. She is going to do it, and she's going to win the round as well. Taylor Spivey is going to end up with 46 points. Second yesterday and to first that. today, Absolutely Taylor Spivey. Fantastic right, work, right. and she wins the round. Kirsten Casper comes in second after such an aggressive race. Look at Taylor Spivey. She has given absolutely everything over this weekend. Katie Zafiris finishes third. That is and something we're not up used to seeing. Wow. 43 points as well overall, which means that she will actually finish third overall in the weekend, equal wow. with Casper on 43, but Casper finishes above her today. I don't think so, any of us called those you know, we results call the way that it actually panned out, those combination of the two events. That's what's done it for Katie, because Katie and Kirsten have ended up on the same amount of points, if our very quick maths is correct. Well, there's a lot of scribbling on my sheet of paper, and I hope I have got that correct. We'll get the official results in just a second. Rachel Klammer came in fourth position, and Jody Simpson fifth. And these women have given absolutely everything to this weekend's racing. And you can't ask for more than that. And Taylor Spivey, second yesterday and first today in the women's, the first ever women's sprint enduro in triathlon ever. Takahashi, the Asian champ, the Japanese champ. She finishes in sixth position. And Charlotte McShane brings it home after a tough day out yesterday in seventh position. Three of our women got eliminated. Joanna Brown, Emma Jeffcoat. Summer Cook. And Summer Cook, I'm just thinking back. That's right, Summer Cook, who had a tough day out. But Taylor Spivey is your Mallorca Round 3 Super League Triathlon Champion, and she earned every single metre of that. She did. She worked incredibly hard for that. And uh, whilst myself and Chris both felt that her and Kirsten should have utilised that short shoot on the first lap, on the first, sorry, from the first yeah. run of the enduro, it proved to be perfect tactics, really, to take it when she took it. And, yeah, she really dug in hard for those final sort of four, 500 metres. And you can see the pain etched across her face, but I'm sure she's absolutely delighted. All right, let's have a look at the official results. Taylor Spivey coming in a tick under 40 minutes. Kirsten Casper and Katie Zafir as America. One, two, three. Rachel Klammer in fourth. Joni Stimson in fifth. Yuko Takahashi and Charlotte McShane just avoids elimination with a 1.27 uh, just under the 90 second rule. And Annie Emerson is down on course with Taylor Spivey who's just about caught her breath. Taylor, what a race. It is so much more than swim, bike, run. There is so much to take in. How do you do it? How do you keep your cool? Oh, I don't know. Um, the American girls especially really pushed me on that bike course, and it was so hard. And, you know, I, I really didn't think I would take the win today, but luckily I think uh, hard courses and steep hills play to my strength, and, and that short shoot really helped me take the tape. At what point did you decide to take it on the last run? Um, I knew I needed, um, you know, as big of an advantage as I could on Katie, and if I took it too early, I think she'd have someone to chase. So... I just hoped I played my cards right, and I definitely did today. The American girls have been so strong right across the board, particularly in World Triathlon Series racing as well. So what does it feel like to come here and come out as the, the top girl from America? Oh, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, Kirsten and I were really lucky to have the short shoot today. Otherwise, I think Katie, Katie would have won. But, um, you know, we raced really well this morning, and, and it played to our advantage today. Did you see Katie's mishap in, in the first transition? Uh, yeah. She always, she, whenever she has a, a mishap, she always seems to come back even stronger. So um, she's a fighter in the race, and she's always one to beat. And last thoughts on the World Triathlon Series? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with my consistent season, and this is my, my last race of the 2018 year, and I'm... I'm really happy to, to win. Great stuff. Massive congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, your Super League triathlon round three winner is Taylor Spivey. Congratulations to her. She mentioned the short shoot there, and this is the moment that she took it. Kirsten Caswell was forced to use the whole course, and Taylor Spivey, she kept it in her back pocket. We thought maybe it wasn't the right thing to do, but once you see that there's no one in front of you and you've got 500 metres to run, well, you'd back Taylor Spivey at any point from there. Not only did she take it, she made that turn and committed to a sprint. When, when Kirsten took it, she still had a lap to go, so it was more a take the shoot and settle into your rhythm. But Taylor turned that short shoot and put the hammer down, used the downhill, because on, on road, it was probably only one or two seconds apart. It was magnificent. I still don't think that Kirsten Casper did the wrong thing in taking it when she did. She attacked as she attacked all day, and she was a very worthy second place getter in the end, but Taylor Spivey just had a little bit too much in the tank. Yeah, Kirsten was really brave, and she was a little bit distanced on that first lap of the run second time through, and it was the perfect thing for her to do, to take that short shoot then, put herself right back at the front of the race, make the others chase her. It was the right card for her to use. It just meant, unfortunately, Taylor was better on the day. They were one and two in the championship. Zafiris and Casper, they've taken the win away from them. Taylor Sp Spivey did, but one and two in the championship behind her. You'd have to say Spivey would be figuring in the championship if she was in Jersey. But Katie Zafiris comes across the line in third. She finishes third overall for the weekend. And one and two in the championship are both right now with Annie. Wow, Kirsten, the first thing I've got to say is what a race. You come into your own in the Enduro. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I like this format. And to be honest, I just went out there and tried to give it my all and just run, race from the front. It really looked to us, though, you got the better of uh, Taylor. Uh, you had a big gap. You came flying down that hill. So was it a bit of a shock to see her sort of charge off, off in front of you? She chose to take, of course, the short shoot sooner or later than you did, rather. I lost a couple of seconds in T2. My bike fell over, and I think that cost me probably the race and running for first. Um, I took it on the first lap to try to give myself those seconds back, but uh, Taylor's a strong athlete and she had it today. Well, Katie, congratulations for the series win, but not the win here today. I know that's got to be a bit of disappointment, but I know for the organisers, they're going to love the fact that you caused a little bit of drama for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was just such a tough race and before just coming into it, I really felt not great and I'm actually really proud of how I did. I knew Kirsten and Taylor. I know how awesome they are and with the short shoot, holy moly, it was, that made it way more difficult. <laughs> T tell us about that fall we saw it. It was almost like you had a crash with your bike. Yeah, I mean, it was just me. It was my fault. I still have no idea what happened, but I ended up going basically like head first and just did a tumble. I recovered pretty quick and got on the pack, but um, it sure cost like, I'm sure some energy just to catch up after that. I'm going to say a very commendable because you had a little bit of a gap and you managed to run yourself back in. But I guess there you paid the price, didn't you, really, perhaps for the rest of the race? Yeah, in these types of races, any gaps you let form are going to cost so much energy. And that combined with um, just trying to catch up and going after these guys, it's hard. Well, congratulations both of you. Fantastic racing. Well done. Thank you.